Hello everybody, today we're going to be doing a flyby of every single body in Spaceflight Simulator, excluding the Sun, Phobos, and Desmos. We've just left the Earth, the home of humanity and the biggest of the inner planets. As we all know, each day is 23 hours and 56 minutes and every year is 365.2422 days. Just reaching orbit here and extending those solar panels, following a pretty steep flight plan because our craft isn't particularly aerodynamic. This is the bo most boring part of the mission. So this find the graphic that took me so long to make is our flight plan. First from Earth we'll swing by our closest neighbor, the Moon, then head on to Mercury. From Mercury we'll visit the hottest planet, Venus. After we'll head over to Mars, the most popular planet, and then finally hop over through the non-existent asteroid belt to the Jupiter system, where we'll fly by all four of its moons. As we all know, the Earth's closest neighbor is the Moon. The moon is the fifth largest moon in the solar system and actually has a thin atmosphere like Mercury called the exosphere. Um, fun fact, we've heard of the we've all heard of the Apollo 1 tragedy where the pure oxygen environment caused the fire to spread extremely quickly. Um, while in the later missions, a nitrogen oxygen environment was used on the launch pad at full atmospheric pressure in the capsule. But in space, a pure oxygen environment would still be used at a lower pressure. 5 psi. At that pressure, fire burns the same as normal, even in pure oxygen. I didn't know that, I found it pretty cool. I had to google that. Um, so there's the moon, which should pop up in one second. Um, now, yeah, about now. So there's the moon in all of its glory, very cratered. I'm quite excited for the NASA Artemis mission in 2024. Um, don't know if it's been delayed actually. I hope not. SOS has had a very rocky start. Anyhow, next up on the list is the Sun's closest friend, Mercury. As you can see, we have a colossal 1900 meter per second burn to set ourselves on that encounter. Incidentally, looking at the footage, this burn took nearly 10 minutes to complete with the puny ion engines this craft has. It's worth mentioning that this craft does have a substantial amount of spare fuel in case you didn't do things as efficiently as I did. It can land on the moon and take off with its TWR of 0.26, just barely. Mercury is the sun's closest neighbor at 29 million miles at its closest point, with an 88 earthen day a year. It is very cratered like the moon, and temperatures reach 430 degrees Celsius during the day and drop to negative 180 degrees Celsius during the night. Standing on Mercury, the sun would be 7 times brighter and appear um, 3 times closer. Pretty cool, but not really an ideal colonization target. Following our Mercury flyby, we're performing a minuscule 300 meter per second burn, at least compared to the 1900 meter per second burn we did earlier. This one only took a minute and a half of waiting, thankfully. Um, Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system and rotates in the opposite direction of Earth and most other planets. A year on Venus is 225 Earthen days, and it rains sulfuric acid, which sounds horrifying. A single day on Venus is 243 Earthen days. Initially, it would have took over a 300 meter per second burn to encounter Mars, which is just unreasonable in my opinion. But after coaxing the navigational system by time warping around for a little while, which you'll see in a second, I think. Um. I got it down to just below a thousand meters per second, with a more ideal encounter. There's the 3000 meter per second burn, and it just went down below that. But I'm just glad to be leaving Venus, it sounds horrifying to live on. So Mars, the most popular planet in the news and on YouTube in general. I find that videos with Mars or Moon in the title seem to do better, because probably because of the NASA Artemis mission to the Moon and Elon Musk. So more of the video. If you want a popular video, make sure to put Elon Musk, Moon, Mars, and NASA in the video title. You can thank me later. <laughs> I did finally figure out, just now, what made all of my craft had a, have a little bit of a yellow tinge in Mars' sphere of influence. It turns out that the huge shift value was set to 1 instead of 0. That which makes no sense, I don't know why you would ever need a huge shift value. It's just ironic, because I just finished my Mars colonization, so the joke's on me. Anyways, back to the mission. 
Earth is the most explored planet in the solar system and the only one we've actually sent rovers down to in real life. It has a day very similar to Earth at 24.6 hours and its year is 687 days or 669.6 Martian days which are called souls. It also has two lovely moons, Phobos and Desmos, which we are sadly not visiting today due to fuel constraints, having to capture in its orbit and everything. So using the Oberth effect which states that burning at a higher speed is much more efficient, in other words do your burns at periapsis even if you have to time warp around a little bit, I cut the delta V expenditure again from 3000 meters per second to 885 meters per second. This goes to show how powerful it is. Last but certainly not least, the largest planet in the solar system, Jupiter. There is a notable absence of the other 75 Jovian moons with only the Galilean moons present. I'll try to find a pack that adds them in if I ever decide to do a Jupiter colonization series. They absolutely nailed that turn. Oh, and for the people in the comments, the solar panels are there for aesthetics, since the electric system is getting a rework. Jupiter has an atmosphere of ammonia and water. Ammonia is used as a refrigeration gas and is also used in the manufacturing of pesticides, explosives, and it is an industrial strength cleaner. Pretty grim to say the least, not the, that we would ever want to land there, foreshadowing. And it has several very faint rings made of dust. A year on Jupiter is 4,033 4, days. 4,333 earthen days, or around 12 years. I just got a free encounter with Callisto, which is great really, I can save a bit of fuel, not that we really needed to. At the end of the mission I would have had 29% fuel left if I just ascended straight into Earth's atmosphere, forsaking any realism. Slight course correction there actually, um, 300 meter per second course correction. So much about saving fuel. Back on the topic, Callisto, Jupiter's furthest and most beautiful moon is in SFS. The white spots are thought to be pockets of ice. It is the, I want to say, third largest moon in our solar system, and it possibly has a subsurface ocean like Europa. It's almost the same size as Mercury. Oh yeah, the term Galilean moon refers to Jupiter's four largest moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, which were all discovered by Galileo. But it turns out Callisto hated us and it took some of our velocity for itself and set us on a course straight into Jupiter. Collision course. An ominous sign, I guess. Well, at least we'll finally be able to see and discover the secrets of Jupiter's surface for ourselves. No collision detection. Amazing scientific discovery, but we need to get back on with the mission. With a little help from the quick save function, we can revert to Callisto, and we raised our orbit slightly and set our sights on Io. Um, we didn't raise it enough, but we could time warp out of there. Just raised it to 1000. So, here we are. We're burning just 18 meters per second. And here we are, Io, the fourth largest moon in the solar system, and it is the most volcanically active. It is tidally locked Jupiter, which means the same side always faces the planet, so you get great views of the gas giant. It is horribly inhospitable with its sulfur dioxide atmosphere and it has lava lakes on its surface. Sounds like an amazing place to live. So unlike Callisto, Io was extremely nice to us even though it wouldn't be a very nice place to live and it set us on an encounter with Ganymede. Thanks Io. So Ganymede, the solar system's largest moon. It's the only moon in the solar system to have a magnetic field and it has a thin oxygen atmosphere, but it's much too thin to actually support life. And lastly on our list is Europa, the setting of most cheesy SFSFS, can't pronounce that, movies with, most the, with the most predictable plots, all relating to aliens. Europa is the most promising location to find life, and scientists are fairly certain that it has a salt water ocean hidden beneath the ice. Mysterious. Europa is slightly smaller than the moon, is tidally locked to Jupiter, and it has an extremely thin oxygen atmosphere. It's a really nice planet to look at with its completely ice-covered surface, as you can see. Oh yeah, would you like me to use my voice in more of my videos? Let me know in the comments, because this is not my normal type of video. 
Now we're going to begin our transfer home. We're using a splendid um, 12,000 meter per second burn, as you can see on the screen, to set ourselves on an encounter with Earth. The advantage of doing things with ion engines is that we can keep the craft mass down. This craft's mass is only 75.74 tons, which is about the same as the longest 8 wide fuel tanks. I did the delta V calculations for the craft, and it has an epic 11,200.4 meters per second of delta V when fully fueled. Pretty cool. Oh yeah, did you know when you zoom all the way out on Jupiter, you can see all four of its moons rotating around it? And it's just really cool. I had to start a capture burn way before we reached our periapsis. Can't pronounce that either because of our 5,000 meter per second velocity. However, this makes it a balancing act between deceleration and keeping your periapsis above the surface. Um, I think I reloaded a quick save there. I lied earlier about the Mercury burn. This was the largest burn. It took 19 minutes to complete with the ion engines, and it left us with a dangerous fuel margin of 4% fuel. It wasn't fun. Um, if you're replicating this mission, you can re-enter straight into Earth's atmosphere without consequence, but since I had the extra fuel, I decided to do it for the sake of realism. Now it's time to land the capsule. There's a separate probe core in the body of the ship, so we can set our periapsis in the atmosphere, release the capsule, and then raise it again above the Kármán line. Um, because the capsule had no propulsion system, we're going to aerobrake in the atmosphere. I think we pass about six times before the atmosphere slows us down enough to land. This took about, um, I think this took an hour, all of those aero breaks, because you have to wait through, you can't time warp or else physics doesn't affect the craft, because I think they do it to like save on calculation power and make it run better, because time warping with large crafts is really slow. Touching down on Earth, um, our astronauts should be glad, very glad, to be home. I think the mission took around 50 years, that's just my estimate, with all of the traveling and time warping we did. I think we have 45 mission accomplishments, well worth the sacrifice. Anyways, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing or checking out some of my other videos. Goodbye!